Okay, so what was it that led to this moment here? And Jesus Christ, okay, Pastor John, I'll receive that. You're Thank you. Okay, before we get started, I show you exactly what happened or a bit of what happened. I want you to know right now that this video right here will be coming out tomorrow first. Originally, I wanted my response to this recent Trevor Bauer situation, which is really kind of a cautionary tale for young men to come out first, but I decided to push that video back later in the day. So if you don't see it pop up in your timeline, until about 5 or 6 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, there's a reason for it. But I wanted to go ahead and do this, Mary, because this is a video that I've been looking at for about the past week, and not so much because of the subject matter, but because of where the church is actually headed. Now, guys, I'm a Christian, and I'm not here to preach or anything like that. As a matter of fact, if you're somebody who is uh, not interested in this video because you're not a Christian or you want to come in here and attack Christians, then I don't know what to tell you, except this is not going to be your type of video. However, if you are a Christian who is definitely concerned about what's going on in the church, especially the mega churches, then by all means, stick around. If you disagree, of course, hey, leave it in the comment section. I'm always up for conversations, just the way that it is. By the way, I do want to go ahead and address something really quick, and that right there is YouTube removing certain comments. I want you to know right now that every now and again, YouTube will do this, and then I will see in my analytics, or at least on the video itself, that there's a comment there, but for whatever reason, YouTube will just not show it to me. So if you comment and I don't get to that comment right away, chances are it's probably because I can't see it at that moment in time. Trust me, I will get there. And of course, I'll always acknowledge the comment being there and just say, hey, look, YouTube's got it hidden, but you know, bear with me because at some point in time, it will be made apparent. So what exactly happened in this situation? Well, this is... just go ahead and say this before we get started there's a phrase out there and it's called clean up your own backyard okay clean up your own backyard as a matter of fact elvis presley even in a song called clean up your own backyard even though he didn't write it but still it's a very very good song basically what it's talking about is it's saying that uh if you've got some skeletons in the closet or some things that quite frankly people know about your next door neighbor included you might want to clean that up before you start passing any form of judgment Okay. There's also another phrase meaning clean up your own front yard. You see, if your own front yard is screwed up, nobody's going to take you seriously. And this right here is probably the biggest reason why it is, after what you guys are going to be seeing here in a second, this is probably the biggest reason why it is that Christians are not being taken seriously anymore, but let's go ahead and get to it. If it's right there in the open, then obviously... People are going to not take you seriously. In some cases, some people are going to think that you're not working on behalf of the Lord, but actually working on behalf of Satan himself. This church, by the way, is James River Church, and apparently there's a controversy going on between the actual minister, Driscoll, who I'll just be referring to as the man in flannel for the vast majority of this video, but don't worry. I'll be bringing it up by name before we actually put an end of the video because, like I said, it's going to be a few minutes, but still, I want you guys to stick around for the full piece. Apparently, there's been some controversy going on between him and the head minister, Lindell, but like I said, I'll save that more so towards the end before we actually look at exactly what it was that caused this actual uh, situation. But uh, yeah, this entire thing screams uh, not only demons in the church, but it also screams, um, I'll put it this way here, miscommunication and a lot of times leads to moments like this here that we're speaking about. Now, I filed down a two-minute performance of a male stripper who, and by the way, the Daily Mail claims they've got the information on this guy for this mega church, and of course, the pastor that came to speak, Mark Driscoll, which has got a few people wondering why it was he didn't go to the actual minister of the church first with his actual complaints. Trust me, I'll get to that here soon because obviously there was a lot of back and forth there. You see what it is, is a male stripper performing in a church. This ain't a good look. And people are wondering why it is that Christians and Christianity is not being taken serious at this moment in time. 
I'm not going to sit here and say this to mega church or anything like that. I did uh, go to church for a very long time, especially in my teen years at a uh, big church. It's actually where I learned my original socialization skills, but it's also where I learned to be a jerk. I'm not trying to insult the church or anything. I was kind of a messed up kid. I'm not going to lie to you, especially between the ages of 13 and 16. Dropped out of high school, got my GED, then joined the Marines, and then got out and decided to go to college after I got out of the Marine Corps. Still, though, at the same time, though, obviously I had some serious issues. I'm not going to go through it all right now, but there were moments in time where the church did, in fact, come to my rescue and did save me. Of course, it was a much, much larger church. However, I have learned over the years that the smaller, more country-type churches out there in the middle of nowhere with the smaller congregations, that right there is typically where you get the full, unadulterated truth. I've always advised people, go talk to a minister after you read your Bible, get actual clarification on what's going on. But it's also got making, making people think to themselves, okay, maybe the end times are here. This, by the way, is mentioned in the three epistles of John right towards the end of the Bible itself, right before you get the book of Revelations. But that right there is a different conversation for the day. This right here is not a channel that preaches or does ministry. Okay, I'm just not a minister. I understand Bible prophecy. I understand some things in the Bible, but I'm not the best example in the world. So therefore, I'm not a preacher or a minister. That's not what you're getting here. Getting here. I'm talking about the concerns that you may have with said church itself. And dudes taking off their clothes, getting on a pole with a sword in their mouth is obviously going to be quite controversial, especially when it comes to the church itself. So many people are wondering, why is this the case? And why in the world are the sheep letting the wolves in? Well, the thing is this right here. Eventually, this right here would lead to the minister or the speaker getting on stage and actually calling this out. Now, I'm referring to him as speaker or the minister in the stage because... There's not really much clarification on who is who, or at least from what I've seen here. This record could also be an online problem because the story is obviously in the news. The Daily Mail has gotten a hold of it, and of course, even they're kind of vague with the overall information. But still, though, let's listen to what May has to say. We're going to talk about how to be an Elijah yeah. and how to deal with they have a Jezebel. But let me do this. Um... I've been up since one o'clock in the morning. The reason I'm hoarse is I have been praying for you and my heart is very burdened for you. And I wanna be very careful with this and it's not what I wanna say, but the Jezebel spirit has already been here. The Jezebel spirit opened our event. This is a rebuke and a correction of no one. This is an observation. Before the word of now, before I go any further, it's only about 45 seconds, and he's talking about the Jezebel spirit entering the church and how you just saw it. It's definitely something going on here with this church. For whatever reason, they chose to put a male stripper up there to take his clothes off, dance on the pole, and put a sword in his mouth. They do that type of stuff in Las Vegas. It's called magic shows or whatever the hell they do, stage, opera. I don't know. I, I've never really been the type of person to go to shows or whatnot, even though I obviously have been into a lot of clubs and whatnot. But still, at the same time, though, the point is this right here. This right here is not how you would start a sermon. Now, at first, when I saw this, it looked like a little thing that I used to go to when I was a teenager through the big church called Winterfest. Yeah, you had Janice and Franklin, you had certain ministers come in there and minister for about two or three days. And of course, you go in there and you worship God. But next thing you know, after a while, it just feels like you're in a social club. Don't get me started or anything like that. Still, though, at the same time, I learned a lot of things. It's almost like going away on camp when you actually think about it. Nothing weird, sin, nothing's going on. But still, at the same time, though, that's what I thought this was at first. And I was like, holy crap, they've gotten to the young people. The point is this right here. What you saw at the very beginning is being called out by the minister who so far is looking at this. By the way, he's a guest minister. He's not the actual minister of the church. He's basically pointing out that, look, you know, uh, we've got some problems here. I'm going to pray for you and pray that this spirit eventually goes away. And you don't allow the spirit to come back in. Now, we'll get more into it here in a second. But I do want to say this, though. There are obviously concerns going on in the church itself, especially given the fact that I've even made a couple of videos on this and how it is that you've got... Uh, Pronouns now in church. You've got a lot of people pushing the SJW message in church. You've also got this situation in uh, Massachusetts where you've got black churches trying to get Irish churches to go along with getting blacks reparations, which is something that quite frankly I don't think they should do. 
I understand somebody's going to say, at what point in time can the church not get political? Trust me, the church can get political. There are a lot of political decisions in your Bible. You see them all the time. The removal of King Saul, uh, that right there was a political decision by God. It was also, in my personal opinion, a political decision to allow Nebuchadnezzar to go into. You know, but still, at the same time, though, it is obviously a Christian's job to get political and look at the uh, where society's going. But I think when you look at society, you may also want to look inside the church itself and see exactly what kind of wolves are being let in. Now, look, I'm all about letting people in and getting them saved and converting them over to Christ. But I've also said, and I recently said this in the video that I did on Nala Ray, that I think a track record needs to be established. Maybe this stripper here is coming to actually see the Lord, but I don't think you properly honor the Lord by then getting on stage and doing it what it is that you used to do every night for a thousand bucks a night and go home with whatever woman came to see you or guy. This right here ain't the way to do it. So obviously the situation being called out was something that quite frankly needed to be called out, but let's watch some more. This is a rebuke and a correction of no one. This is an observation. Before the word of God was open, there was a platform. It was a high place. On it was a pole, an ashram. The same thing that's used in a strip club for women who have the Jezebel spirit to seduce men. In front of that was a man who ripped his shirt off like a woman does in front of a pole. You know, I noticed a lot of guys there, and obviously the bit of a Dutch angle, which is being recorded at. Uh, normally when you go to church, you normally don't record this episode at the same time, though I'm glad that we know this is going on in the church. It's kind of a weird dichotomy. It's kind of like, you know, Dude, you're over here complaining about what's happening, but at the same time, you're also complaining about phones being a church actual recording. Well, uh, like I said before, I'm glad this information got out, and maybe I'm glad that somebody had a phone to actually record this, but still at the same time, though, it does make me wonder why it was that nobody got up and walked out. Now, maybe the people in the back got up and walked out, but if I'm going into a church and I see that, which you saw earlier, a guy doing what he was doing, I'm probably getting out and not coming back. I'm not going to say anything. I'm just going to say, okay, get up, get your stuff, and get on out of here. If that makes me a little bit too old-fashioned for what the hell is being preached to me, it's probably because I don't feel comfortable with something that appears to be a demonic spirit or the demonic spirit being exercised within the house of the Lord itself in that form. I know about exorcisms, all that type of stuff there, and don't worry when we start talking about media criticisms and mysteries and whatnot, that type of stuff will obviously come up, especially seeing how it is that I don't plan on going anywhere, and I may even split this channel off more and more and more. I'm not sure yet. Like I said, I'm just now really getting into it. But still, the point is this right here. This type of crap right here does not need to be allowed at the church itself, especially with it being a guy. Imagine if it was a woman who did it. Still, though, at the same time, though, I mean, especially given the fact that you've got these churches out here that are allowing the pronoun game and the alphabet community to basically take over, which, by the way, the Bible itself is very explicit on the topic of uh, that particular community. It's not saying you're not allowed in. It's saying that you've got to repent of your sin and not do it anymore, get saved, and then we'll work on you when you get in. I mean, that after a while, you eventually get cured of the said sin that's been haunting your life. Just pointing that out there, but let's go ahead and finish this part up. That man then ascended. See, our God is not arrogant. He doesn't ascend. Our God is humble. He descends. And then he swallowed a sword and Jesus cried, okay, Pastor John, I'll receive that. Thank you. Now, the actual lead pastor of the church is telling him, you're done. Get off the stage. Now, a lot of people have looked at this, and a lot of people are saying that this guy is wrong for calling him out in his own place. And some people are saying that he, the other guy is wrong for allowing the male stripper to come in there and do what he did. Which also makes me wonder if it was also not a bit of a setup or a show. Either way, you shouldn't be doing it like this anyways. Even if it was a setup or a skit, you shouldn't be doing it anyways. But still, at the same time, though, especially with everything going on nowadays, why would you even take a chance at this? 
Look, I'm all about talking to somebody first before you go public or going out, but still at the same time, I don't think the minister was wrong, but let's go ahead here and hear the other side. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and refer to the minister, Mark Driscoll. So apparently this is controversy where it is that the lead minister, Lindell, wants to get rid of Driscoll, citing something along the lines of because he won't repent. This right here doesn't sound fully accurate to me, especially given the fact that Driscoll has been quoted saying that he thinks there's some obviously some very, very bad things going on inside the church. And then, of course, he calls things out. We're not exactly fully privy at of all the information, we're just going off of what this Springfield Gazette article has. The point is this right here. Obviously, demons have invaded this church, whether you want to admit to it or not. The minute you put a guy out there who is a male stripper who is not only stripping and going up a pole, but also placing a sword down his throat, which is something that you would see most Vegas show people do, obviously, this right here signals that demons have obviously entered the atmosphere, which is supposed to be the house of the Lord. And as I mentioned earlier, if this right here was supposed to be a skit or something, it obviously did not land very well, and obviously it's a very, very racy one that probably should not be let in the church. Now, if somebody wants to come here and talk about uh, certain things that were done, all I have to say is that cults should not be allowed or anything. We, 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 look, we've been fighting back against this crap for a very long, very long time. It's part of the reason why I've always said if you want unadulterated truth, go to a small church. I'm not saying this to bash the mega church or anything. I'm sure there's some very, very big mega churches that are pretty good. I went to one, I mentioned one earlier, we used to go on trips back when I was a teenager and it was a good church. I was the problem. All right, the point is this, right? I didn't get kicked out or anything. As a matter of fact, I still get it from time to time. I'm just saying that I was a problem in my teen years there. The problem was this right here though. If you really and truly want that unadulterated truth, go to one of your smaller churches because those are the only people who are going to be 100% honest with you and they're more likely not to allow crap like what you just saw inside the house of the Lord. That's what I'm saying. The only thing my man did was call you out for having this crap going on inside your facility. The only thing he did was call out the Jezebel spirit that was obviously haunting the church. The only thing he was doing was telling people to be aware of things. Now, it's very, very possible that the pastor is probably a little bit upset that his flock or his group may decide to abandon him. But like I said before, if I walk into a church and the first thing I see is a guy who's a male stripper who's doing a very, very suggestive dance, jumping up a pole with a sword in his mouth. Uh, yeah, I'm probably going to get up and leave. That's not Christianity. Like I said, I understand skits and whatnot, but whatever the hell possessed this type of skit here, obviously something's not right here. Obviously not a church that I would go to. But about talking to the minister man-to-man -man directly, and of course you hear the minister say, no, this fire came up, and you know, he knew all this fire. I, I have a hard time with that. Now, it's possible that my man that you saw earlier who first spoke, it's possible that he had been told this, he had been told this was going to happen, and he may have walked away and said, this right here is pretty daggone screwed up. I can't be a part of this. As a matter of fact, I'm going to go up there and I'm going to make a scene so that way he does remember me. Either way, though, the guy was correct for calling out what it is is actually a demonic spirit within the church that the minister, the head minister of this facility, allowed in. I'm sorry, but I got to go with my man in the flannel. I mean, like I said, normally I would be all about having the conversation first before going public with something, but still at the same time, if something is so egregious like what you just saw within the church itself, 
Yeah, I would have a serious problem with that. And I think that this church right here, this mega church is about to lose a lot of members or a lot of people are definitely thinking about leaving. Which brings me to this next thing. You see, this is one of the reasons why it is that people think that Christians are weak and that Christians are a joke. I mean, just the other day, and I'll link this video right here in the description box, Andrew Tate was over here. And by the way, this is a guy who was a Christian and he was an atheist and he was a Muslim. And, and uh, you know, religion, online religion is a bit of a Another one of the reasons why I don't do anything religious content you know, on the platform because that's why people just look at it and say you're just grifting for views or you're just grifting off of each freaking movement the point is this right here Tate was out here basically saying it's about time Christians got mad like I said I'll leave the video in the description box so that way you guys can actually see the full subject matter but my man does a good job of putting him in his place about the situation the point is this right here though this right here is why people like Tate this is why people out there on the internet make fun of Christians and make fun of Christianity if you can't keep your own backyard clean, or in this case right here, your own house clean, or your own front yard clean, nobody's going to take you serious. Nobody's going to want to have anything to do with you, and they're going to think that everything about you is an absolute joke. That right there is the real truth of this situation. That right there is another reason why it is that my man, the flannel, which I think his name is Driscoll, he actually called this out, and this is one of the reasons why is I got to kind of side with him. He called out the Jezebel spirit, and obviously these people here don't like the fact that the Jezebel spirit was called out, and obviously you guys can see what happened. Still at the same time, though, it seems to me like the wolves have been allowed inside the actual church itself, and obviously this requires another demon that we're going to have to exercise. The enemy's right there in front of your face. He's all over the place. You better go ahead and pick up a stick and go ahead and start fighting. By the way, YouTube, there's other advocation I'm talking about in the figurative sense, not the literal sense. Yeah, I figured I'd go ahead and throw that out there before YouTube comes in here and hits me with a uh, terms of service violation. With that weather being said, guys, please tell me what you think in the comment section. I would love to hear what you guys have got to say. I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on this work. Please hit the like button. Please subscribe. Please share the video. Sign off in the comment section. The second video of the day will come out after this one right here, and I'll see you guys later.